afternoon, everybody, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, coming to the first part of our uh, presentation, that is the fulfilled electroretinogram in pediatrics. The, it provides objective measurements of functional physiological integrity of retina, and two-year-olds are the most difficult patient to be tested on ERG, but testing becomes easier once the patient becomes five years old. The best methods are sedation, general anesthesia, and my favorite method is skin electrodes. But when you use skin electrodes, remember ERG response are much smaller and variable. So this is the handheld ERG, which has recently been launched in a market, and maybe this is more helpful for the pediatric. I don't have any personal experience with this. So according to one study, use of ERG in pediatric patient, the most common indication was nystagmus, decreased vision, and sensory neural deafness. ERG was valuable investigation in confirming, excluding, or providing a new diagnosis in 85% of cases. Uh, the best indication for ERG will be a normal fundus and a limited visual acuity in a young patient. The best examples are labus congenital amaurosis, acromaptopsia, congenital station in light blindness, and rod cone dystrophy. Coming to labus congenital amaurosis, it's an autosomal recessive inherited disease. Poor vision will be there at birth with ocular digital sign, roving eye movements, and majority of the fundus will be normal like this patient of ours. With time, as they grow older, patches of peripheral choroidal atrophy, coloboma, and mottling can develop. ERG is very typical, that is flat as compared to the normal ERG which is uh, shown below. Next example where the fundus can be normal is uh, congenital stationary night blindness. And in today's world with urbanization, even night blindness is not present in these patients. Myopia strabismus can be common, and they are of two forms, that is complete and incomplete forms of e on ERG. Uh, this is the ERG of one of our patient, which is having complete uh, CSNBM. You can see the rod functions is totally absent, while the combined response is negative because of the bipolar on cells defective. The light ERG is normal in amplitude as well as in uh, latency, but the morphology has been changed here in the A wave. Second example is acromaptopsia. Again, here the fundus will be normal. At times, with time, subtle macular changes can develop. Uh, these also can be complete and incomplete. And ERG is very typical. This is a patient who has nystagmus, that's why we have these artifacts, but the rod ERGs and the combined will be normal, but the light ERG will be totally flat. Uh, next indication for ERG will be diagnosing infants with congenital nystagmus. We can have retinal dysfunction in 36%. The best example, again, are co labus congenital amaurosis, acromaptosis, and retinal dystrophy. Then we have post-retinal dysfunction, which occurs in 50%, that is ocular albinism, optic now hypoplasia, and idiopathic. So ERG screening of infants with congenital nystagmus can establish or exclude retinal and post-retinal pathway dysfunction. And all, remember that ERG should be combined with VAP in this patient. Uh, recently, we have uh, ERG telling you the prognosis of patients in dystrophy. Best example is again Stargards. Though we can diagnose it easily, uh, they can be divided into three groups on ERG, that is group one with normal fulfilled ERG, group two with normal scotopic rod ERG, but reduced cone, and group three, that is abnormal rod and cone ERG. So these are the three ERGs in three groups of our patients, and group one has the best prognosis, and you can predict with without doubt that 20% of pro, uh, patients will progress to group two or group three in 10.5 years. So this data today is arguably the most accurate prognostic information of all inherited retinal disease, which we get on ERG. Coming to visual evoke potential, uh, this originates from the visual cortex, which uh, processes information from central 10 degree of visual field. Uh, infants and preverbal have broader application than adults, and we have two uh, VEPs which are commonly used. That is a flash VEP. They are very friendly with the kids because we can do them in poor vision, corneal opacities, and um, inattentive kids. Pattern VEP. It's more quantifiable and reliable, but abnormal wave can be there if the uh, patient's refractive error or media opacity or uh, patient is not cooperating. Also remember that you should have a normal data for that particular age for comparison. So normal VPs are usually symmetrical. If you don't have the normal data, remember this. They are symmetrical, and they should not be more than 5 mm difference in both eyes. So the clinical applications are lesions of eyes and ocular media, like 
congenital cataract, PHPV, corneal opacity can be tested with flash VPs. A normal flash VP, you need not uh, look at the waveform be because they will uh, differ with age. A normal flash VP rules out severe macular optic nerve disorders. It can be useful even when the ocular disorder is apparent or the diagnosis is apparent. It will tell you about the visual acuity estimations. My, uh, the best indication for VP is to diagnose lesions of the afferent visual pathway. It establishes degree of function loss, like this is an example of optic nerve atrophy where you have uh, the VEP totally uh, flat and you have a normal VEP here. And then it's also used for monitoring the uh, lesions like optic nerve gliomas. Nowadays, uh, they are used for extent of optic nerve damage and follow up post-surgically. So combined ERG and VP can be used for evaluating retinal and post-retinal functions. Uh, this is the best uh, indication of VRP, v, uh, VP according to me, uh, that is ocular albinism. It's difficult to diagnose. Uh, all the signs may not be present, like foveal hypoplasia, fundal hypopigmentation, and iris uh, illumination. Though nystagmus can be present in most of the patients. So in this, what is happening is there is a chiasmal crossing uh, fibers from each eye to the contralateral hemisphere. You need a special VP that is called as five channel pattern appearance VP uh, uh, or a flash VP and it shows a contralateral predominance typical uh, which is very typical of alpinism. Like in this example you can see this should match this but this is not matching this. This waveform is matching this area from here or this is matching this but not matching this. So this is called as contralateral predominance which is very typical of albinism. Amblyopia is another indication. You can have decreased amplitude, asymmetry, or absent uh, for smaller patterns. Uh, it helps to early detect amblyopia, and if you are using occlusion therapy, VEPs can be helpful because they become equal with uh, successful theory, therapy. Uh, delayed uh, visual mat maturation can be another indication. It can differentiate from more serious causes of permanent visual impairment. Uh, like both pattern and flash VPs are present in a normal pa uh, patient with DVN. While in retinal or optic nerve disease, they'll be absent or abnormal. Uh, coming to the last uh, indication of this presentation, that is optical coherence tomography. It has an important role in monitoring of various ocular disease in children, but the problem is the scope is currently limited because la we don't have normative OCT data. Then there, it needs a lot of adjustment, like the axial length, corneal curvature, and astigmatism, age-related risk. Recently, we have this handheld OCTs. Don't have any much experience on this. So OCT can be again used for unexplained visual loss and possibly retinal dystrophy. This is a patient of macular dystrophy where you see total wipeout of the ISOS junction in the central area. Then you can have excelling retinoschisis with slitting of the inner retina. Cone dystrophy with a clear cut a gap in the ear loss because of the loss of the cone. And retinitis pigmentosa where ISOS junction will be normal in the central area. Infantile nystagmus is another indication for OCT. You can have a typical foveal hypoplasia like in uh, uh, albinism or typical foveal hypoplasia like acromactopsia. Here the layers of ganglions cross the foveal pit without uh, getting interrupted. Retinal dystrophy, like I told you before, and idiopathic nystagmus, you'll have a normal OCT. There are a few indications like poor visual, uh, visualization of, on indirect ophthalmoscope or conventional imaging, still OCT will be helpful. That is retinopathy of prematurity. One would love to know what is happening to the posterior neovascularization, retinoschisis, vitro-retinal detachment, macular atrophy, or C uh, CAD. Then recent indication is for optic nerve uh, pathway gliomas. Uh, the ganglion cell layer uh, as well IPL thickness can be seen as an early marker of structural damage as well as uh, post-surgical. Combined hematoma as shown in this picture, uh, it tells you, uh, it not only shows you a disorganized and thickened retinal tissue but shows a hyper uh, reflective mass. And recently we had solar eclipse, a kid of five year old complained of de decreased visual acuity and OCT we could see this hyper reflective traveling in the uh, outer retinal layer. So to conclude, ERG is a valuable test in acromaptopsia, CSNB, LCA, which can present with normal fundus and limited visual acuity in young children. Scenarios in which VP remains clinically useful are evaluation of visual pathway in infants, 
ERG and VEP screening for infants with congenital nystagmus can establish or exclude retinal or post-retinal pathways and poorly visualized with indirect ophthalmoscopy or conventional imaging are the best indication for doing OCT in children. Thank you.